Well, today I'm continuing my interview with Reverend Mary Cardin and her reconciliation ministry in Brazos Covenant Ministries out of Granbury, Texas. Well, Mary, would you please give us a quick recap of what you said last week concerning your reconciliation ministry and how it expresses kingdom principles? Well, Tom, we talked about how that God gave us keys, Christ gave keys to the kingdom to loose and bind on the earth. And so I began by just talking about, I believe God put me in Granbury, Texas for this time and every one of us where we're supposed to be in this time so that we would seek him and express his oneness that a mature body of Christ begins to be one and properly represents Christ. And, and the different ways that we do that by just, first of all, beginning to see everyone as a part of the body of Christ that has Jesus Christ in their heart and beginning to determine that nothing will divide us. In other words, nothing will be bigger than his love. Amen. That is really true because how will those who do not see Jesus as Savior and Lord, how will they come to know him if that isn't true within our own body absolutely absolutely and and reconciliation with him first gives us the heart and the love to see that expressed and i'm pretty passionate about racial reconciliation so our particular ministry has done a lot in our region um, to see the races come together well, that's great today i would like you to express the two major points that you mentioned at our last Burleson Christian Ministerial Alliance meeting. Uh, both points came out of 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. The first one was honoring one another, and the second one was deeply listening to one another. Would you please expound on these two points for us today? Okay. I love this. I believe there are two major attributes that I'm going to say particularly the church in the United States of America have lost the concept of honor and listening. Honor is a rare thing in the body of Christ today. Now, 1 Corinthians 12 plainly is telling us, you know, we may often say, and I know I've said it in my own life and had mm. to repent, you know, I just don't need that person in my <laughs> life. And the Lord said, if he's... He or she's part of the body. You may have to repent from not wanting them in their life, but mm -hmm. you need them in your life. We need each person in the body of Christ. Yes, we do. And um, he follows in to saying, let me show you a more excellent way. And I love that because the word more excellent way literally means to throw beyond. Mm -hmm. So if on one day... Think of uh, the discus games in, oh, in yes. the, in the, that the Romans played. If one day I feel that I've used all my strength mm -hmm. to go a certain distance, look beyond that. Okay. The Lord may have me stretch my heart and the gifts he's given me to go even further because he said the more excellent way is to love. And, Tom, I have, as each person, I have so many shortcomings. I, I can't stand and say I don't have any fear, but I can look beyond and yes. throw beyond and let his love touch every area to take the body of Christ into the full expression of Christ. So there's when he describes love, I just want to say that honor is so, so integral to that whole concept because if you envy not and if you don't seek your own, see, fear does all of that. Fear is not patient and not kind. It's impatient. You know, you're mentioning about throwing the discus further. It's like walking the extra mile, isn't it? That yes, Jesus it is. Told us. Yes, it mm -hmm. is. A great example. And so let's walk the extra mile because his love gives us the strength and the power to do that. Um, let me say something about honor, if sure. I can. Literally, honor encompasses the value you put on a person. It, it literally from the Greek is mm -hmm. the price paid for something. And Jesus paid an incredibly high price. Yes, he honored us. Didn't he, he honored us. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think, again, amazing, he died for us. And then 
And I always say, oh, my goodness, people of God, think of this, filled us with his Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. lives inside of this clay vessel Mm, to consider the honor that he gave, that he didn't, he laid his life down. He became as a servant. Can we look at each person that we meet? Who are we ever to say this people or that person has less value? I'm not going to value them as much as I do myself or someone else yes because when he was through creating us he said it is very good you know we're made in his image all people are made in his image so it's very good and he honored us from then on you know we've received honor from him uh, to the very point of him dying on a cross for us that we might be his forever yes his child and so uh, what a wonderful thing that he's done in setting that example for us yes You know, Tom, I want to say something um, so many times. I want you to think of the transformation that would occur. If every time we as the body of Christ went into a gathering or met someone, if instead of the first thing on our mind being, how will I be treated? Mm -hmm. How will I be received? Could we intentionally go in to honor? See, honor gives people value honor it's not surface it's not fake but to go in and intentionally honor people breaks down incredible barriers yes you're right and so what would it be like if we as the body of christ begin to move with intentional honor every place we went you know i've often uh, of recent years been praying that god would help me to see others through his eyes and see the beauty that he sees in people and how he then would look at me you know different than even what i would look at myself he sees me so much better than i even myself look at myself but he looks at everybody uh, with the same way of appreciating who we are and of course he looks at us all through jesus so he sees Mm -hmm. the beauty there amen and uh, and how how desirable it's like the song of song says how desirable we are to him you know and i think we go in and we look at someone's outward appearance and we make judgments and that type of thing that prevents us from even getting close to what he sees so uh honoring yes what a wonderful thing to do you know um i'm just i'm just going to uh I, I'm a I'm a person that I kind of get to root issues sometime, but truthfully, if every place we go, our first consideration is how am I accepted and how am I treated mm-hmm. and how am I honored, then are we not indeed moving in the fear of what people think? Mm-hmm. Um, I have a great friend in Oklahoma. His name is John Benefield. I love this man. Mm, yes. He says, show me a place you have fear, and I'll show you a place you have an idol. So <laughs> we need to stop making people more powerful than God so we can love people. But mm-hmm. to go into every situation with how can I add to your value in the Lord? You are so precious. He died for you. Now, how can I come into mm-hmm. agreement with that? That's good. And move that Mm -hmm. way, I think the world would see a transformation and see the true body of Christ. Amen. I agree. So I'm I'm changing my mind. I hope everybody (laughs) out there listening is having an inward shift. Well, I know God brings uh, circumstances to bear in our lives that help us to come to that place, that conclusion, if we accept it, if we look at it as his hand rather than just happenstance or, or being capricious, you know, or bad luck or even, you know. Why is God cursing me so? It's Why is God blessing me in this way? <laughs> yes. Maybe it's because of relationships <laughs> yes. that are right around me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I, um, I've seen whole gatherings shift and change when honor came in to the atmosphere. Amen. And, I, and that's why, you know, if we honor our parents, so why we give them a long life Uh, the elderly it blesses us the elderly uh we are to honor the elderly Mm -hmm. we're to honor everyone in authority and truthfully first peter says honor everybody honor all men yes it does yes slave or free of course no one's a slave in jesus (laughs) in terms of uh you know we're all one in jesus you know 
full benefits and inheritance of Abraham and all the promises given to him. Well, you mentioned that there were four levels of listening. Would you describe those to us today? Yes, I will. Honor listens. You see, our Father listens to us. And I want you to begin to understand, all of us here today, that it's listening to our Father God. It's hearing Him that He desires. As a matter of fact, hearing and obeying are the same word in the Hebrew. Our obedience to Him is tied up in our being able to listen to Him and being moved by His voice. So I want to say honor <laughs> listens. And so if we learn to listen to our Father and honor His voice, we begin to learn how to listen to people. Now, mm, yes. there, there, there's literally four levels of listening, and the first one is, is to ignore. You know, you can have people talking all around you, mm. and it has no value to you, so you just ignore them. And we've all done that. Yes. But if we don't ignore, and we certainly don't want to ignore God, and we move up a level, we come to something that's called pretend listening. Mm -hmm. I'm pretending that I'm listening to you, but really my mind is somewhere else. There's a great commercial on <laughs> TV about a guy looking at his football game on a <laughs> phone while oh, he's oh, trying yeah. to right. have a relationship with his girlfriend. But we pretend we're listening, and we're looking interested in the expression on our face, but our mind can be a thousand miles away. And truthfully, that's dishonoring. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be. Then we can do what I call selective listening. This is the third level where I'm listening to you, to what interests me. But inside, I'm really listening to how I'm going to form my next response. Mm -hmm. yes. This especially happens if we're in an argumentative situation or something that's a little bit of a hot button. Um, we do what I call selective listening, and, and our, our hearts really, you know, I'm going to form my next response. But, Tom, I, I believe there is a deep level of listening called empathetic listening. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do too. Where I'm listening solely for the point to hear a person's heart, to enter their pain, to bear their burden, and I have literally no other agenda than to honor where they are by listening deeply to them and sometimes this really takes moving past fear but as I have I just want to say how how important this is to reconciliation because mm -hmm. sometimes we have divisions but if we will stop and hear someone whether or not we have total agreement on where they are but to give understanding you know understanding can be given and to just bear and hear where they are, I have, this is how I have learned from the Native Americans. This is how I've learned from the other races. This is how, this is a deep form of honoring, honestly. I believe that. I know my wife has taught me some things about listening to her that I have then realized that that's exactly what God does for us. He does. When we cry out, he listens to us and hears only us, even though he can hear everybody at the same time. He hears only us and gives us full, his full attention. And he wants us to do that with each other. Yes, he does. You know, even when Jesus was touched on the hem of his garment by the lady who had an issue of blood, he heard her. No words were spoken, but he heard her and he gave her his undivided attention and healed her right there yes I knew exactly what her situation was that it, 12 years I believe of having this issue of blood and he said because of your faith you're healed and so that's how he responds to us he wants us to do that he does with each other. you know mm -hmm. there's an old Indian proverb about 10 blind men who were sent by their teacher mm. to discover the elephant and each one had oh, a perspective, this, yeah. yes, had a perspective of the elephant mm. according to what they could touch. One <laughs> touched the leg and said the elephant's like a big column, and on and on and mm. on. But the point of that story is that had they come together and put their hearts together and heard 
the other's part, they would have had a whole picture and a picture of reality. And sometimes, you know, Tom, one time I had a deep conversation with a good friend of mine Mm -hmm. and just listened to a political matter. That can be a real hot button, can't it? Mm -hmm. But I listened to her heart and why she was struggling so much on how to vote. I wasn't struggling. Mm -hmm. I saw the elephant's trunk. I was totally, my (laughs) mind was made up, but she had, as a different race, a totally different thing Mm -hmm. she was Mm -hmm. struggling with because what she saw as evil in the land was a different paradigm. And it opened my heart and so that we could pray together and I said, you know, I, I'm going to pray for this struggle mm-hmm. you're having right that's, now. And I want you to know I will be praying all the way through it. And that's exactly what we should do, isn't it? Yes. Not, not that we understand everything that everybody else ever thinks. It's just that we have compassion, or like you say, empathy. And we respond empathetically. Yes. In prayer. <laughs> when, the, when the Comanche came to um, Granberry, one of them smoked a peace pipe. Well, you can imagine in the traditional church in Granbury, people were freaking out mm, mm-hmm. because here was a Native American <clears throat> brother smoking. Well, smoking, we could start there, yeah. a peace pipe, <laughs> and um, right. and it was tobacco. But anyway, I, I went intentionally to this brother and said, talk to me about this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and listened to his heart mm-hmm. and um, began to understand some of the wounds that had happened to them as Native American in a way I wouldn't have if I hadn't, if I had just judged him Mm -hmm. and not gone and given honor and listened, I wouldn't have the understanding, you know, thankfully that father in heaven through Mm -hmm. that brother could give. And that's right. And that's how we can bless each other. All of us. Well, you also mentioned that when we honor those of other races, as you were just talking about, that we allow them to lead in the ministry being done at that time. So how would that work in our local cities today? Well, if, like us, you're going to come together as the church and celebrate black history, and why shouldn't we Mm -hmm. celebrate their part in our nation? It's been an incredibly important part, and we need to honor that. Yes, we do. Honor their leadership. Intentionally submit uh, to the other races. So if I have Native America come in to lead one of our meetings, I submit to them. Mm -hmm. I honor their leadership. I don't want them to come in. Um, It's good for us to be experienced as servants of one another. We're a servant to the Lord. Now Mm -hmm. let's serve one another. So intentionally, as you honor by listening and honor and give value, give places of leadership. And some of us that are leaders in mainstream churches for a long time need to experience intentional servanthood and submitting to one another. Well, Jesus did that with his disciples, didn't he? He washed their feet. He washed their feet. He said, no, you can't do that. (laughs) And he said, yes, I can. And that's what I'm going to do. And as he did it for a reason, which they then came to understand what the reason was. (laughs) Yes. And if you don't, he said, you can't have a part in Mm -hmm. me. And so it's... It's a beautiful place to just continually give esteem and honor without fearing how someone's going to do it. They may not do it exactly like you would. Mm -hmm. And And that's that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. We all worship God in our own genuine, sincere way, and it's good. He receives it all. (laughs) Yes, he does. And, of course, talking about prayer then, without praying together for the things of the kingdom, none of what we are talking about would come to pass As we come to the conclusion of our broadcast today, would you please talk about the importance of prayer in the kingdom work of the Ministry of Reconciliation? Prayer is what we do. Everything else is just gathering up the results of prayer. And um, (laughs) I want to tell you, I still believe that 2 Chronicles 7.14 I believe we can heal nations. I believe that's what we're called to do as the church. And when he says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I say, it seems to me like he's saying that humility looks like prayer. Because I am then on my 
face saying, you know what, God, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I need you. I can't make this happen. That's right. But I bend to the one who can make it all happen. And so I, I really say to the people of God, we move past methods and into his presence, mm -hmm. that what comes out of his presence will certainly endure and be much more than what we can produce. That's right. You know, where does it say in Ephesians 3 that whatever we ask for, he gives us much more than we can possibly even imagine, you know. But if we don't pray, in other words, we don't humble ourselves before the throne of grace, well, then we don't even begin the process. So he wants us to be a child and just ask for what we think we need, and he then will give us what we really need. <laughs> Absolutely. I would... I would say, be afraid of one thing, the Lord, and doing anything without Him. I would say that that gets pretty scary. Yes, it does. And we, we live in a world that is saved, but it doesn't always look saved. And so we have to go in that faith, knowing that the Father who gave us Jesus, and put Jesus over everything now in heaven and earth, <laughs> and He's the head of all of that is, <laughs> Yes, that He is going to do what he said he's going to do and that he's going to bring everything into oneness yes. in himself and we're going to be one with god forever so we we need to pray together don't we <clears throat> yes we do and um you know i just i would say that praying together is a beautiful oneness to him when we come mm -hmm. together and pray yes it is it, it is a very beautiful thing to him so would you please uh, lead us in prayer at this time? Yes. Thank you, Mary. Father, I just would humbly ask you to produce in us a grace that knows that your king, Jesus, really is king and rules. Father, I thank you that you have chosen us on the earth to do your will. And so, Father, teach us to pray. We come like disciples in the beginning and say, teach us to pray to our Father mm -hmm. yes. that everything that is done is out of your presence and out of your love. And, Father, bring us to the full representation of Christ that we look like you. Let us submit our hearts. And, Father, we just end this today by saying we love you with all our hearts. Change us and make us new. In Jesus' name. Well, amen. Well, let me uh, thank you, Mary, for coming and being with us and giving such an excellent testimony of your ministry and sharing it with the whole region and uh, when it's on our website, the whole world. I'd like to pray for you as we close as well. So we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for Mary Harden, for her Brazos uh, ministry. We realize uh, your heart in it. We thank you, dear God, for her sharing her heart with us. And we do ask and pray that you'll bless her in her ministry, and her ministry of reconciliation to reach out to everybody, uh, to treat them all as the people of God, the people who you've made in your very image. And if they don't know you yet, they will. Uh, because you are God and you call us all to yourself and through Jesus Christ. And we realize that you have reconciled us through your beloved Son. And we are so thankful for that. We, we just feel so grateful that he was willing to come and live among us and give his life on a cross, that his perfectly um, holy blood, as it were, because he committed no sin, would be applied to our sins and would cover them. And his righteousness then would be attributed to us as his people and as his children and as his brothers and sisters and as his friends. We pray, dear God, that you'll be with Mary and bless her, and bless her richly in your spirit, through your grace that you've given to her, through the word that you have helped her to understand and to, to bring close into her, her heart. We pray that you'll bless her richly to continue in the ministry of reconciliation in Granbury, the surrounding areas, and to the world. We praise you, dear God, and ask this in Jesus' holy and righteous name. And together we say, Amen. Amen.